Welcome to the Children in Scotland podcast. We're going to talk today about our open kindergarten project and we're joined by David from Children in Scotland, Claire from Parenting Across Scotland and Ruth and Nicola who work with Midlothian Sure Start. Hi, I'm David. I'm the project manager on the Open Kindergarten project. Open Kindergarten is a family support project for the early years and we've been working with two early year centres in Midlothian and in Edinburgh on this one year pilot project. Claire, do you think you could tell us a bit more about the project, please? Yeah, I'm Claire Simpson, I'm from Parenting Across Scotland and um, the project came about in some ways because I was very interested in the fact that Scottish Government were planning to expand childcare and early learning in Scotland. And that seemed to me to offer opportunities to support parents in a different way. More children and more families were going to be coming into contact with universal services. So I was lucky enough to get a travelling fellowship from the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust and went to Sweden, Norway and Denmark. And in particular, in Sweden and Norway, I was really impressed by what they call the open kindergarten model or open preschool. And what that was, or what that is, is very much a kind of model where parents are coming together in a kind of playgroup type model, but actually with professional workers, so that they get not only peer support and very much asset-led, led on the strengths and what the parents want, but there is that professional friend, professional backup. A colleague in Children in Scotland also went to Finland and saw the model there and the two of us came together and said, should we try it out in Scotland? And the project's mostly aimed at at parents and carers with children aged zero to three. Yeah, I think in in the Nordic countries it's very often aimed at parents between naught and six, which is their school starting age. But... Mostly it is parents who either aren't working, I mean in the Nordic countries mostly they are working, but they have very long parental leave. Here it can be parents who aren't working or haven't yet gone back to work. And it particularly, I suppose, addresses that point between getting your baby box and then moving into early learning and childcare, should you want to use it, but that phase of Sometimes people call it the important thousand and one days or but that early bit where an awful lot is happening to your child, they go in developmentally through all sorts of things and quite often parents just need that extra bit of help and particularly that bit of social contact. But you know, you may have difficulty with your child sleeping, weaning, breastfeeding, so many things that are all new to you and all happening at the same time and it just offers an opportunity to come together with other parents but also with some professional support. And there's obviously been a huge investment in Scotland in the expansion of early learning and childcare and this this model kind of fills a gap do you think between the sort of health visitor coming and supporting the family and then when families might start taking up early learning and childcare provision? Yeah, totally, because I think the health visitor provision runs throughout, and with the universal health, new universal health visiting pathway, it is much, there's a lot more contact, but there's still a lot of times when parents are on their own, and it is that time, you know, however long children spend in early learning and childcare, whether they go in at two or three, they are actually spending the most time with their parents, they're the biggest influencers and I think if you can also in that key time if you can build relationships with trusted professionals and other parents it becomes much easier to ask for help and I think we then start to see the benefits of that down the line better interaction with schools with nurseries with other professionals and feeling more efficacy as a parent to actually say you know it's not wrong to ask for help it's okay to ask for help everybody quite often doesn't know something about that new stage their child's going through. So maybe we should have a little bit of a chat about the open kindergarten approach um, and what we're trying to do within this pilot project. So um, this is a one-year pilot project working in two different sites. Um, We're working with Midlothian Sure Start, who are a charity based in Midlothian at Mayfield Family Learning Centre. And we're also working uh, in partnership with the City of Edinburgh Council at one of their settings, Granton Early Years Centre. 
we're also so it's a partnership between five organizations so children in scotland parenting across scotland city of edinburgh council midlothian shores start and the project's being evaluated by the University of Stirling, which is, is great. So we're exploring how this model can be adapted within the Scottish context. Yeah, and we had a stage one funding from Scottish Government Social Innovation Fund, really looking at, you know, it's a great idea and it happens like this in Sweden and Norway, but Sweden and Norway are not the same as Scotland. So it was looking at what aspects work, what aspects don't work, and we talked to a lot of people then, we talked to health visitors, other professionals, and we also talked to parents about what, what might work in the Scottish context. And then we talked to the two settings and said, can we, can we trial this? So that's what we're doing at the minute, and I think there's going to be a lot of learning. There's the open kindergarten model, but I think there's a more general thing about can we use the opportunities offered by early learning and childcare to ensure that parents are supported better so that they end up coming more confident, better prepared to that early learning and childcare and then it becomes more helpful to them and their children. So the model of open kindergarten, Ruth and Nicola, perhaps we could bring you in now, what you do with the families. So um, Ruth, you're a family support worker at Midlothian Shore Start. And the model that you have there is twice, you run twice weekly drop-in sessions with families. And then you also do outreach work to encourage the families to come in and really to support some of the families who need a bit of extra help come in to attend the sessions. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about how the structure of the project and how it works for you. Yeah, sure. So we run, we're run, we running um, two sessions just now per week. So we do a Wednesday morning and a Thursday afternoon. And because we're in that trial period, we thought having two different times, we would see if there was maybe one time suited parents better. And I think it's turned out that depending on maybe the parents that are coming along, the Wednesday morning does suit. But for some parents, getting up and out of the house that time in the morning doesn't always suit. So then the Thursday afternoon group's really good. But yeah, while we were sort of establishing in the group, there was quite a lot of outreach work and just going, speaking to people within the community and finding out, yeah, where those sort of gaps were and what parents were looking for as well. And yeah, just really sort of going out and meeting with families in their homes and just getting them comfortable and probably quite familiar with myself um, before we even t- took those steps to then go into the centre. So. And how long do the drop-in sessions last for? We do say two hours, um, but we found on the Wednesday morning it starts at half nine, but parents that maybe have older children would be dropping um, their children off at school and then rather than going home, they would just come straight in. So it's actually started that we're quite lucky that we've got that flexibility within the centre. So parents can come in sometimes they they put the kettle on have a cup of tea and then sort of get ready to start the group at half past but I think having that sort of flexible starting time is really important for parents because if you're running late and it which it does for everyone you get those mornings that you maybe um, things don't go that well and I think being able to come into a group that you're not worried about it already starting I think that was something that really sort of appeals to people as well. Um what do you do in the group sessions? So one of the interesting things about the Open Kindergarten Project is we didn't have any prescribed format for the for the sessions. We really wanted it to be very parent-led, parent and carer-led, so that they would be choosing what they focused on. Can you tell us maybe a bit more about how the project has developed over the past year and the sorts of topics that you've focused on and the sorts of activities you've done with parents and carers? Yeah. Um, yeah, because it is quite different from other groups that are maybe more structured. So one thing that I think the parents have fed back that they enjoy, that there is lots of other groups that they can go to that are quite structured and they do enjoy coming in and having a sort of relaxing atmosphere and being able to being able to play with their children. Like we do have lots of different things set up in the room um, to encourage those sort of relationships with the parents and their children. But we also have a big comfy a tea that parents can sit on and when they need that time to maybe just speak to one another that that was really important as for sort of professionals coming in i found that you were really having to sort of pick up on key themes that maybe through conversations um so it wasn't necessarily about me thinking oh right this week we'll do 
we'll have a speech and language person coming in. It was really sort of picking up on what the parents, if there was concerns or any worries, or for example, um, we had some mums that were moving on to sort of weaning their children, um, and there was a lot of sort of talk about that. So bringing someone in that could speak to them about that, um, and we also brought in someone that could teach sort of basic first aid as well, because through the conversations there was a lot of worries about children choking and things like that. Um, so being able to have that have someone come in and just reassure them almost and um, sort of teach really basic first aid was really valuable um, and it got quite a good turnout that day as well so yeah so I think I think that sounds fantastic because actually in a way what happens is parents talking to each other kind of normalizes the problem and mm. you realize you're not the only one that's worried about first aid or about mm. weaning but then you can pick those conversations up and take them and make sure that parents are then getting the correct information, you know, the, yeah, from a professional. Yeah, yeah. And how important is your role in that relationship and, and the development of the group? Obviously, you've said you've been having to pick up on parent conversations and, and, and the way that the conversation is, is going and then um, look at developing the programme through that. Perhaps you could say a bit about your relationship with the parents and your role in the group. Yeah, uh, I took quite a... Um, Quite a flexible approach around it and I suppose when maybe once the group was starting off there wasn't as many sort of conversations as people were getting to know each other so maybe having to take the lead there and just facilitate a bit more sort of general conversations but I think now as the group's really developed I could almost take a back step and it's really nice to see that um, over the sort of coming months that parents have got quite comfortable with each other um, and they do bring a lot to the group and I think even out with the group, they're sort of communicating and supporting each other and yeah, so it's just, I think, now that the group's more established that they're quite confident and able to speak to each other and actually we've had parents coming over and saying, oh this week could you ask a health visitor to come in? So I think they're really taking on board what the sort of ideas are around Open Kindergarten and it's, um, yeah, I think it's been really, really good for that. It's great to hear those social groups, social networks yeah. building and that kind of peer-to-peer -peer support for parents and carers which I think is a really important mm. aspect um, of the model. Nicola perhaps you could tell us a bit has have you seen some examples of um, uh, how it's affected parents and carers who've been attending the sessions? So we found um, some of our families that came in were very shy to start with and we've actually noticed a big difference in one particular family who has now she can come in and she can facil almost facilitate the group herself. So she's using, and just from building up that trust and relationships with herself, she's now taken in that positive praise. She's taken it on to then help other parents in the group, which is really nice to see. That's really positive to yeah. hear. And are you getting, what kind of families are you getting? Are you getting lots of the same families you'd usually get or different families or? No, we're actually finding that we have a very broad range of different families and different backgrounds. We have parents who are needing that little bit of support, but we've also got parents that are looking for that, just that nice safe place to come and play with their children. And yeah, just using it in their days off from work. And it's a nice actually having that balance between different sort of backgrounds of the families in the group is really good to see. There's no stigma around the building, no stigma around the group to say it's only for that sort of support for families that are really in need. We've got that sort of range there, so that's quite good. And it's the balance of sort of different backgrounds, I think the parents are really, we've got parents with maybe older children and they're able to support the sort of newer parents and yeah, it's just a nice, a nice sort of balance, isn't it? Great. And can you tell us about some of the topic areas that you've covered? You touched on a few of those already, but um, I know you've worked with a lot of different professionals and brought them in to, to explore a range of different areas. Yeah, um, we did have Clay Midlothian were able to come in and do some um, messy play uh, sessions with us, which was really good. So um, that, that involved jelly, didn't it? Yeah, there was playing jelly. with jelly on the floor. <laughs> I've seen some great photos of that. Um, yeah, and lots of like paper and different um, things. And that came from sort of parents talking about um, at home the sort of restrictions of like not wanting to have maybe paint out and things like that. And just they were obviously wanting their kids to have these great sort of learning experiences and having all that play, but maybe at home that's not the right place for it. So um, that came from a conversation around that. that and then we were able to... 
um, contact Play Midlothian and they were happy to come in and do some play sessions. But I guess they're also low cost ideas that parents could then replicate at home if they yeah, wanted mm-hmm. to. So in ex- extending those ideas at, yeah. f- from the family centre into their own home as well. Yeah, and um, we have a health visitor coming in because um, we've got some new babies in the group and it was just to, to sort of have that relaxing conversation and I think sometimes parents are actually now feeling that having it at those conversations in the centre they would prefer that than doing it at home as well which is a really good um, a really good thing eh? That's really good A couple of the topics that have also came up is sort of behaviours around children so we've actually sat on myself and Ruth I've went to a positive behaviour course so that we can then give that sort of professional advice to them and see how we can then help each individual family work out what sort of behaviours these childs are going through and then give them this, this the good ideas and how to take it forward from there. Could you tell us a bit more about how the involvement with, with the practitioners in uh, Norway and Sweden has, has impacted the project? So you did some you did some uh, video conference calls um, with some of the practitioners abroad just to to talk about the open kindergarten model and to think about how it would develop here in 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 your setting. Yeah, um, it was really interesting actually, and um, I think one thing that came across was that it was really embedded within their community. So parents expected parents could come in, um, and by the time that their their children arrived, they felt really comfortable, and they were they had those relationships with the professionals before the child was even there. So they were able to access lots of different help through the centres, and um, and just it was nice to actually see what the centre looked like as well. So having that opportunity to see what um, resources were out, and um, an important thing that came up was to have a sort of an area that parents could breastfeed as well, and have sort of comfortable areas to relax but also maybe an area to have a cup of tea and have those chats as well with the toys and different things around so it was nice to well, well, one thing that um i saw when i was in sweden in norway you're talking about how embedded it is in society and i suppose quite often i'd see like a new housing block and part of it would be this open kindergarten on the ground floor or so it really felt oh, i mean one of the places i stayed in had a block of flats and there was a nursery and open kindergarten and playground and you could see the parents dropping their kids off, going to work and kids coming out and playing in the playground. It was such a community asset. That's amazing because we've also thought about, doing, we've got the fair share which is like a food provision so it's just cut down on like supermarket waste and things like that and we have it in the centre but some of our parents are now looking at maybe going out and into the community and delivering that food to different people so I think yeah that's hopefully a bit more sort of community spirit and things like that so yeah there's lots of positives coming from the mm-hmm. kindergarten. And one of the um, things that came out of one of the video conference calls that we did um, uh, with one of the practitioners in Sweden was um, this term that came up which was professional friend um, so talking about the role of the family support worker within uh, within the open kindergarten uh, um, as being a professional friend I mean what, what do you think about that term and, and do you identify with that yeah I think so I think that's a, I, I think it's a really nice way to put it um, I suppose that's what we are I think parents feel comfortable and they can come and ask us if they do need help but also and just being there in the room and not not letting the parents feel that pressure of I'm here as a professional I'm here just to have a general chat with you and just building up that relationship and trust with them it really really works there's there's so much that's said you know in the evidence in academic evidence and everything about the role of professionals and how much relationship based practice and building up trust works but you're really showing in practice just how it works and how important it is for parents yeah I think the the home visiting as well, so when we were starting off the project um, there was a lot of going into people's houses and maybe just having a a cup of tea with them and having a chat and finding out what it is they were looking for and building up those relationships out with the centre I think kind of helps as well with that, Um, that that we're not professionals and we're not here to judge and and hopefully that adds to this trust and the safety that they feel when they come in. I think that's a key word there, isn't it? Trust. That yeah. they, the families have trust in you and they feel that you're you're part of their network as mm-hmm. well. Um, 
perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how the group developed and um, some of the advertising, how you engaged with families. You, you mentioned going out and doing some outreach work, but uh, perhaps you could tell us how the project's developed and how you've got families involved. Um, yeah, so when I, when I first started in the role, I worked, there was a summer programme going on at the local high school, so that was a good way to to um, to go in and meet families that lived in the local area and just to sort of build up those relationships there, but also to see what parents were looking for and would they, would they come into the centre and things like that. I think that we use social media a lot to advertise, as that's one thing that parents had fed back that they would use it every day. Um, it's very widespread throughout the community and we, we put a lot of posters around the community also and that's brought in a lot of different parents. And are you, I mean, with social media, are there particular types that parents respond better to? Or? Mostly Facebook. Yeah. Uh, we have a Facebook page for the our centre, so we use that page just to advertise. And we've actually had um, some families tag themselves in our building so that that goes wider spread and their families and friends can then see it. And I think, Ruth, before you mentioned um, word of mouth being an important, yeah. um, mm-hmm. uh, important thing for getting families through the door. Yeah, because it was so easy. I think it took a while for this sort of idea of people to learn about the group. And um, I found that putting posters up and things maybe wasn't the best way to reach parents at the start. Um, and as Nicola was saying, Facebook was a really good, a good sort of advertising platform. But I think some parents were looking almost for that reassurance from other parents that have maybe come to the group and because it's quite hard to to get across in a poster what what the group's about and some people have quite a lot of negative experiences going into groups so that's maybe something that would give them um, a bit anxiety about coming into a new group that they didn't know what to expect so yeah just going along to say book bug sessions or different um, things within the community to to speak to parents and hand out flyers and um, but yeah, I think word of mouth has probably been our, our sort of biggest boost for, for families coming in. And I think we've said it's a really um, important point there, that things don't happen overnight and it takes a lot of trust. The trusted professional and the group being there, it might take quite a while before you actually yeah, see, yeah. It, see mm. it really begin to flourish. I think it's only now, so you have the first three months the group was, was quiet, um, and coming back from this like, break over Christmas, we found that the numbers are sort of rising each week as well, mm-hmm. um, which is lovely to see. But I think it has taken it just the word to get out and for people to sort of discuss it maybe in other groups and um, friends, that like people are bringing along their friends now. And um, yes, yeah, so that has taken that while to sort of start up. So what are the next steps for the Open Kindergarten project in, in Midlothian? Uh, being part of Middle Insurance, we actually have six centres throughout Midlothian. So we are looking to hopefully aim to get open kin- kindergarten running in each centre. So we're in a different area of Midlothian in each bit. So That's hopefully. great. So you've seen the positive impact of the project and you're looking to extend it across your other sites? Oh yeah, definitely. And it's definitely something that's really allowed our centres to be more family friendly I would say and as I said before there was a bit of stigma in our centre in Mayfield that it was for families who only needed that extra support or they were referred in from social work but we actually want it to be a community family learning centre and the open kindergarten has been fantastic to open that sort of the doors for other people to come through. Great. And Claire, could you tell us a bit more, because there are also plans for uh, um, a CPD resource for the Open Kindergarten uh, project to, to look at um, for other practitioners if they're thinking about working with parents in a more um, proactive way. Yeah, um, we've got plans for a CPD module um, before the end of the project. So we're looking at the evaluation, and of course we're talking to Midlothian and to Edinburgh and to our colleagues in the Nordic countries to see, I suppose some of it will cover the policy background, some of it will um, look at practice and some of the barriers and challenges to doing that. Um, Some of the particular groups, particular challenges you have if you're living in poverty or you're a young parent or so on. Um, And hopefully, 
working to get that out by the end of April, but what we're hoping is it's a resource aimed at practitioners to say, if you work in, in an early learning and childcare setting, here are some ways that you might think of working with families and attracting families into the centre. I was just remembering that being on my travels and being in Norway and going to see a centre in a place called Tromsø, which is above the Arctic Circle, and um, one of their practitioners there saying to me, Lena, saying, well, you know, your job now is to bring this back to the UK. And I suppose I never necessarily thought that that would happen, but it's really, really exciting to see what Ruth and Nicola in Midlothian and Natty in Edinburgh are, are doing and, and making it a reality. It seems as though it's a really good move for parents and for families and, of course, for children at the end of the day. Thanks for everyone for coming in today. Um, it's good, really good to hear about how the project's been progressing. Thank you for listening to the Children in Scotland podcast. To find out more about the Open Kindergarten Project or any of our other work, head to our website at www.childreninscotland.org.uk.